save every disciple. So the more we use water, the more it's like and this is very light. It's like a family here, huh? Yes, yes the master. Yes. Okay, don't wake up. We have guests, you know, in the house, so we cook for everyone. Food ready, yum yum. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, already lunch. He had to slander. He just likes to feel the love. Okay, this is snack, alright? Come away, come away. Two, three. What is that? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Okay, Mama Laila. <laughs> I have to be three, four masters all together at one time. Otherwise, one person is too much, too busy, too busy, too busy, and have a body problem and uh, cloud problem. I forgot, I don't know where my comb is. I cannot comb my hair. <laughs> Just go like this. Sorry. Sorry, just one second. I have. I keep calling, they don't answer. I have to call again, huh? Understand? Okay. Yeah, and then I will see to you. Don't worry, I'm not running anywhere. Today, because somebody is going early, so we, we have earlier, earlier a gathering, okay? So that they can go. Some Chinese people has to go. Everybody is home, yeah? Anybody not home? Yeah? Is Xiao Bi here? No. Xiao Bi? Uh, Thomas? No? I think no, I didn't see. I not didn't yet, see huh? Okay. Well, I wash already. I wash. It's still. Still? Oh, yeah. It's a little better, but. Because my hand is not clean. Maybe that's why. <laughs> I smear it on the glass, make it worse. You know, cream, dog drools, dogs, you know, saliva. Oh, <laughs> useless. Huh? What cream? Shaving cream. Shaving cream? Yeah. And then it will be good? Yeah. Oh, I have to get a man first. <laughs> I never have to shave in the whole life. <laughs> Many women they shave, but I don't shave. I have nothing to shave. <laughs> Just because of alcohol in the shaving, you can use alcohol too. Alcohol? Yes, so some, they have some I don't even tower. drink alcohol. What to no, do? They have some tower. Uh, tower. Alcohol. Oh, that thing. Yes, for, the wet tower. Yes, uh huh. Yes, for glass. Oh yeah. For glass. Yes. For glass? Yes. I don't for have. I can do? We can, you can buy food. Any, right? Okay. Checking it out. Oh, man. If I read something wrong, it's not my fault, okay? <laughs> Thank you. No, it's not about this. It's just <laughs> something. Maybe I can ask them to buy for you. Oh, buy too many things already. My God, my house. I, <laughs> I wanted to find time to throw everything out. I said, don't buy anything yet until <laughs> I throw everything out. Everybody come to my house and good intention. Buy this cream, that cream, that oil, that tea, that non-alcoholic beer, that oh, that lipstick and that the rouge and that uh, shampoo and that after shampoo and before shampoo and <laughs> body cream and 
no body cream and oh my god <laughs> I, I, I don't know <laughs> whenever I come home I don't know if it's, I'm in the wrong cave or <laughs> wrong house or not <laughs> all the things I want is not there all the things that that is not what I want. So I think I knock at the wrong door, you know, <laughs> maybe wrong cave. I probably have to write my name on my cave and say, This is my cave! <laughs> and I will not think it's the wrong house. Yeah. Mm. Just like after you've been here, I don't recognize this room anymore. <laughs> I don't recognize this room, this room at all, you know. <laughs> I used to sit here and with my dogs and some assistant, and we're watching some cozy film, the television big over there. Now it's gone, There's all the chairs gone, <laughs> beds gone, sofa gone, dogs gone. <laughs> I'm also gone. <laughs> there was a man, he, he, it's a joke, you know, he's drunk, yeah, he's drunk. And he going around and looking, looking. The police come and ask him, what are you looking for? Yeah. Uh, he said, I'm looking for my car. I said, but where did you last park it? Where, where, where did you last see it? Said, where did you last see it? He said, yeah, the last time I saw it, it was attached to my key. <laughs> <laughs> And now I have the key here, the car is gone. <laughs> huh? Good one, huh? Yeah. <coughs> Drunk. Yeah. And there was two persons coming home, you know? And trying, uh, and trying to want to get in, but there's somebody sitting on the, in in front of their porch and in front of their door and keep sitting there, not going anywhere. And uh, when they approach, you know, the couple approach. They say, "What are you doing here?" I say, "I'm sorry, but we we live here. Can we come in?" <laughs> <laughs> and the the drunk man say, "Huh? You lived here?" I thought I live here. <laughs> I said, what do you mean by that? This is our keys, you see? I'm going to open the door, and that means I own the house. Hmm? It's my house. Yeah. He said, I also have a set of keys, look like your key. I keep open, but it doesn't open. <laughs> And I keep open so many houses. They're all in my houses. How come they don't open anymore? <laughs> I think I have to change the lock. <laughs> Drunk, you know? Drunk. Yeah. <laughs> Does she have to talk so loud? <laughs> don't have microphone? Wow, so many stories. You want to listen some more story? Okay, I, I didn't read any of this, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's good. This is another story about about the Buddha, huh? Uh, past life of the Buddha. According to Buddhism and the believer and the tradition, when you read sutra and all that, you have to put on incense, flower, you know, and bow to the sutra first and thank all the Buddhas and Bodhisattva in ten directions, all respectfully, before you read it, okay? And then you cover the sutra also with silk or, you know, beautiful cloth and I just make it more popular, yeah, more easy, simple. And I apologize to all the Buddha. I say, if I've done something wrong, according to the tradition, my heart is full of respect. It's just that I cannot always do that. So please, all the sin, whatever I've done wrong, is all on me. At least other people, they hear the names of the Buddha, 
according to the sutta, they will get benefit. Yes. Uh, first, I have heard the story about Lagnasaya. I don't know who that is. <laughs> I don't know him. <laughs> One time, the Buddha was in uh, Katilave, Kapilasuva, I think, country, in the in the ashram called Nikoluda, Vietnamese. <laughs> uh, at that time, uh, all his clan members, yeah. Uh, uh, Sika, Sika member, and all the cities, people, all the citizens in that city saw that uh, the Buddha has a lot of like uh, magical power. Not meaning that he's showing off, it's just that people sick become healed, and yeah, some people blind bec- become, uh, regain the eyesight again, and many people uh, attain our hearts and all kind of uh, spiritual uh, uh, level. All the uh, Sikh family members and clan members and relatives and friends and all the citizens saw that the Buddha has attained a lot of power, you know, invisible power and saved many lives and um, enlightened numerous people. Mm. They are also very, very happy, yeah? And they are also envious of the five person Kyutang Yu, the five person, the one, uh, the five, the first five that the Buddha uh, preached to, yeah, and became his disciple, the first five disciples. So everybody was thinking, oh God, I lost it. <laughs> mm, lucky I wrote something here, I can find it. I can find out. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. So they was um, they were thinking, oh, what kind of luck do they have that the Buddha, that they become Buddha first, foremost five disciples. So some of the Bichu monks, you know, heard all this talk outside from outside disciple, outside people. So they came in and asked the Buddha again. Obeisance to the world honored one. The cit- citizen, they are praising you every day, everywhere. And also they are praising the five person. They say the world honored one. They're, the citizen are praising you and the five first disciples. And they would like to know what kind of merit these five first disciples have, so that when the Buddha first became Buddha, they became his first disciples. Yeah. Uh, they think, they thought these five people must have been extraordinarily good persons in the past life, or did many, many extraordinary uh, merit. Yeah. Mm. So they asked, what kind of merit did they did they uh, earn in the former life, so that the Buddha, you know, saved them first, five of them first. So the Buddha say, oh, I still have it here. Mm. The Buddha say to them, oh, this is too thick, <laughs> too hot. This is just fine, huh? Mm. But today is comfortable, huh? Yeah. The weather is nice. Yeah. So the Buddha say, all of you should know, long, 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 long time ago. Yeah, cannot imagine, cannot count how ma- how long. I w- I had to use my body. I mean the Buddha. Yeah, I had to use my body to save them, to save their lives, because of this good affinity. So today I save them first. Yeah. But there are many good affinity, huh? Last time they drink Buddha's blood, and this time the Buddha has to use a body to save their lives. There are many different lifetimes in order to now to be able to save them. My God, what are disciples? <laughs> to save people doesn't mean they, they do anything good. Sometimes they did, sometimes not. 
Sometimes you have to do a lot of good deeds to them first. Good deeds, uh, saving them, or helping them, uh, many, many lifetimes, and then they come back, become your disciple. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> I don't think I need that. <laughs> Terrible. You know, they drink his blood even. Yeah, there are other people also, eh? the old woman and the two sons, remember? They were tigers in a former life, and he has to kill himself so that they eat his flesh, and then, and then he also now <coughs> saved them. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now all of you love to be Buddha, right? I know. Okay, very good. Excellent. Continue. Yeah, I wish you all luck. <laughs> All the best luck <laughs> you can need. <laughs> yeah, otherwise everybody think, oh, the Buddha just sit under the Bodhi tree for 49 days and then he became Buddha. So everybody want to look for the Bodhi tree <laughs> and want to sit there 49 days. <laughs> Maybe only 49 hours and cannot be already. <laughs> but before he sat there 49 days, he has done many, many countless, you know, Numerous good deeds and sacrifices, yeah. And before that, before, before, before that, he was already a Buddha. And he has to return to the cycle of transmigration again and do everything again, all over again, from ABC, in order to save different people. The people that he saw affinity with before, but he wasn't able to save them when he was a Buddha in the other lifetime, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So mm, the monks uh, tell, told the Buddha again, uh, obeisance to the world honored one. In the former life, how did you save their lives? Could you please enlighten us on that? So the Buddha say, okay, all of you listen well. A uh, long, long, long time ago, you know, uh, also on this earth planet, there was a big country called Balanai. The country uh, king at that time is Farmadat. You know, this over and over again, the Buddha has referred to this country. Probably in this lifetime, Buddha was there. Before becoming Buddha again, he was there, and he did many inc incredible uh, sacrifice and good deeds yeah, in that country. So we heard this country again, again, and again. Yeah. Uh, there was a person, a merchant, you know, a businessman. His name is uh, Lagna Saya. Whatever, yeah, Saya, <laughs> Saya. <laughs> uh, one one day he went to a forest uh, and saw a person stayed in there. Uh, uh, crying, and then was trying to hang, hang himself up, you know, to die, you know, by hanging, commit suicide by hanging. So he came, he came nearby, he came next to the person and said, "Oh, what's wrong with you? Hmm? The human body is so difficult to get, and our life is uh, very uh, unreliable. Yeah." Today we are alive, tomorrow we may die. So why are you so hurry? you know, <laughs> like if we soon die anyway, why worry about it? Okay, please uh, take off the, the, the nook, yeah? And then uh, don't, don't die, you know? it's a pity to die, yeah. Anything you want, uh, you can tell me. If I can help you, I would, yes. So the person said to him, Noble man, I, uh, I don't know what to say. My house or uh, myself is, is too poor, too lack of everything, you know, too poor, too poor, too miserable. Yeah. And then not only poor, but I own a lot of debts to a lot of people everywhere. Yeah. So now they come, then they came before and they slander me, they degrade me, they humiliate me a lot, and then they took all my properties away. So now I, had not, I have nothing. 
Yeah, even though you are, you have a good heart and try to interfere and try to stop me from killing myself, but even if I live, where do I go? I have nowhere to stay. I have nothing to live on. So it's uh, better I die, so I finish all this suffering. Yeah, that's what he thought. Mm. So the rich person, you know, the merchant say, okay, never mind, you take, uh, take away your nook. Is it a nook, right? For, for hanging yourself? Yeah, take away the, the, the rope, yeah, the hanging rope. Hey, whatever you own, uh, uh, little or much, I, I will pay it for you. I will pay it all for you. Don't worry. Yeah. So, oh, he was so happy, happy. Of course, he took away his rope, uh, the rope to to hang. Yeah. So he don't want to die no more. And then go with the merchant, the businessman, to his home. And then tomorrow he went out into the market to tell all the people he he, he owns money, say that tomorrow he will pay, but go to the house of Mr. Saya, the, the businessman, he will pay it all for you in my, in my name, for my sake. Oh, my God. Tomorrow they all came to his house. But he didn't know that this wasn't all so much. He paid everything, but not enough. He paid all his whatever he had, just because he promised this book. And then even... Even then, still not enough. So his wife, his children must even go out, become beggar. No more, nothing to live on. Okay. Uh, the parents, the, the brother and sister, they all hate him, hated him, thinking he's crazy. He kaput here. <laughs> and then because he destroyed the whole prop, the whole possession. He gave away everything. And then even let his wife and children suffer. That is not right. They think he's not uh, very responsible and he's crazy. Yeah. Oh my God. At this time, he fell already at the end of the road, just like the other person. <laughs> Yeah, karma, eh? exchanging karma. Eh? This person is released, relieved of all the debt and trouble, and now is he is the one <laughs> who are in trouble, deep trouble. At this time, he was thinking uh, it's the end of his, you know, there's no road to go, nowhere to go. And then suddenly there was uh, a group of He's uh, acquainted before, you know, businessman. Yeah, I invite him to go with them, to go out into the, go into the sea. To do uh, some business. So he was saying, "I was your guide. Normally, I was your guide. As I supposed to, if we go out, I supposed to be the one who bought a, sh a boat for you." and then guide you out. And now I have no more money. What do you think we can do? Yeah. So they say, oh, we have 500 people. We chip in and buy the boat, yeah, buy the ship, so you don't worry. They knew each other before, so I guess it's, they trusted him because he used to be their coach, yeah, business coach, <laughs> take care of them. So. So they give, uh, they put all the money together, a lot, a lot of money, a lot of gold, yeah, and then give it to him, even give it to him like that to go by ship. Uh, and then he bought uh, the ship for one thousand gold coins, yeah. And then he bought all the food for the road for the journey, another one thousand gold coin, and then he bought uh, all the necessity for another one thousand gold coin. And then uh, whatever left over, he gave it to his wife, his children, and then give it to the person who, <laughs> who bankrupted him <laughs> also, <laughs> the poor person, the one who wanted to kill himself. What a good person, huh? 
not only he doesn't hate him, so for bankrupted him, he even help him when he has money, give him more. Oh man, how can you get into so much debt? I told you, if you don't have money, then don't buy. Yeah, yeah. And then you don't have to. It's, but sometimes bad luck, you know. Like you go to the bank, you loan some money, so that you do some business. Yeah, and then suddenly business no good. Somehow, or people cheated you and took all your money away, yeah, and then you became poor. Yeah, it happened also to my mother before one time. Yeah, we became, wow, very, very, very desperate at that time, and then she even gave birth to my uh, sister, and then my mother was near death, and my baby sister was just born, and we we have no servant, no one at that time, no money. And because uh, uh, somebody cheated on my uh, of my mother and took all the money away, yeah. Okay, right. Okay, and then uh, uh, he. Okay, and then he went. This person uh, went to buy a big ship, yeah, for them. And this uh, ship is very sturdy, yeah, very thick, sturdy, very strong. And they they built it with seven times of wood, not just one time, with seven layers of wood, so very sturdy. And then they have seven uh, rope to um, to tie the 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 sail, yeah, the sail. Mm. And then. Uh, Every, and then he told everybody to come to gather at the at the beach. Yeah, they're going. Yeah, and he said to everyone that of course we all love our families, our wife and children. Yeah, but we, if we have to go, we have to go. Mm? But uh, when we are going into the sea like this, it's very dangerous. There are ghosts. There are uh, there are demons. Yes. And they are uh, big waves, you know, and they are uh, sometimes a stormy sea, and then also big. Uh, uh, there are some big, uh, big fish at that time. They could swallow the whole ship. Yeah, we don't have that anymore. I don't think so. No, it's now it's the opposite. It's the ship that swallow and kill the the fish. Yeah, and there are even some uh, poisonous dragon, you know, snakes and sea snakes, sea dragons. Yeah, so we just have to uh, be prepared. Yeah, for for everything. Yeah, and then he uh, he cut one of the 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 nail of the of the mm, one of the rope that hang the sail. Yeah, and then in seven days he cut all the rope. I don't know why. Uh, this time, uh, when they went out into the deep sea, suddenly, you know, suddenly uh, the the sea becomes stormy. Big, big, big wave come up, and then make their uh, ship, you know, uh, like uh, toss and turn very violently. Everybody was scared, very scared. So some people snatch the life-saving. Uh, uh, how you say? What do you call that? Life boy? Yeah. And then some people snatch a piece of wood. Some people just jump down like that and try to swim away from the ship because the ship was very uh, uh, shaky at this time. Yeah. Uh, and that. Uh, and then after, there was only five people stay in the ship and saying to the guy, you know, this guy say. Uh, because of you, we follow you here. We trusted you, so we came here. And now it look like we're going to die here. Please help. Please save us. You are our guide. Please save us. We trusted in you, and we still trust you. Please save us. Okay. So the the guide, you know, this man who uh, everybody trusted him. He say, I heard that. The ocean never uh, want to keep dead body. 
Therefore, every dead body is always be flowed back into into the land. Yes. Therefore, I am going to to kill myself now, so that I will die, and then you will hold on to my body, because the sea will float my body onto the shore, and then because of that, you will be saved. Your life will be saved, and I use this merit to uh, offer toward Buddhahood, so that one day I will become Buddha, and then at that time I will use the Dharma boat to ferry you across to liberation, to the Nirvana, uh, to, you know, Buddha's land. Mm. You will be the first ones I will save. Okay. And then, uh, and then he used a knife to cut his throat, and he died. Yeah. And the big ocean doesn't keep a uh, dead body, just like he said. And then the, the, the god of the sea used his uh, strength, power, to blow, blow like a wind, and blow this dead body into the sh- onto the shore. And then, of course, this five person who was holding on to this dead body saved and lived. And they, uh, of course, go back, went back to their family. At that time, the Buddha said again, remind everybody, be chill. All of you should know the Lakna Saya at that time was my incarnation, my former inca- one of my former incarnations. And the five person who hold, held on to my dead body to survive, these are the five person from Kiu Trang Yu, the group. Yeah. I saved I saved their lives at that time, and so now I became the Buddha. I also saved them first, as promised. Everyone heard that, this story, and they all praised the Buddha, immense compassion and love, and everybody vowed to become more diligent in their practice, to repay his kindness, to repay the Buddha's kindness and to save others as much as their capacity allows. Yeah. All right, this story finished. Mm. Done. <laughs> ah. Cannot believe that, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody still want to be Buddha? <laughs> still want to be Buddha, huh? Yeah. yeah. Until you become Buddha is probably long, 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 long eons anyway, so it doesn't matter, huh? But uh, you can be Buddha also. If you, if you uh, liberate in this lifetime and you reach the fifth level in this lifetime, then you are Buddha, meaning an enlightened saint. Yeah? Uh, and then you don't have to even save anybody. At least you save yourself and your relatives and friends. Yeah, we have some Buddhas in our group. Uh, uh, some in Meli, <laughs> Sihu, yeah, and some among uh, you people around the world, yeah. But I'm not saying who anymore because you're going to spoil them, and then they drop. Their level will drop down again. I'm not saying anything anymore. <laughs> you try to find out who who is number fifth. <laughs> yeah, you keep praising and clinging to them, and they just became Buddha. You know, married very thin. You know, just rely on master power only, and then everybody jump on them and cling onto them, and then all sing together. <laughs> yes, better not. That's why I told you don't tell your experience to anybody. Eh? Because they cling to you. Mm. The reason why the Buddha has to do it all over again, mm, because he has to earn merit again. Understand? When he finished saving all sentient beings as a Buddha, he he's done all the affinity with all the people he has to save. 
and he has to save. So the Sekamoni Buddha finished his job. After he became Buddha, he saved whatever souls that has affinity with him. And then he used his merit to save them. Okay? Yeah. So he finished with that, with humans' affinity and merit. But he is still a Buddha, of course. Eh? But meaning that all the merit that he earned, he has to use to give it to these people in order for them to rise up to become a heart and anaham and arahad and all that understand yeah or liberated therefore he's done yeah so if he want to come back as a buddha again he has to earn the merit again the merit in heaven and the merit here is different of course you have merit from heaven you are buddha no? he was a buddha long 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 oh, who knows how long time, you cannot count how long ago. He already has been a Buddha. But if he wants to come back to this world again, then he has to earn it again. He has to show affinity with other beings. Yeah. So that's why he referred to it again and again and again. What did he do? What has he done? With whom he saw the seed? You know, uh, what kind of merit he earned? to our Buddhahood again. You see, he, he transferred it to our Buddhahood again and again, even though he was already a Buddha. If you have no affinity with human beings or animals, you cannot, you cannot save them. See, even to the save the three tigers, he has to kill himself to let them eat them, eat him. And then aeons later, long, long later, <laughs> many lifetimes later, then he can save them, and they become his monks. It's like that. It's a ridiculous world. It's a nonsensical world. Mm. It's not. It's not fair. Not fair. Even the Buddha had to suffer so much again, so that beings can be uh, can be uh, benefited. You see, can benefit, and it's not one lifetime. Oh, if you want to come down here again. Then you recycle, retransmigrate in this life, in this world life again and again. You see? Therefore, he referred to it again and again that he was in this world, on this earth. You see, aeons ago, there was the same, same earth that he has done this and done that. And then now he became Buddha and saved the people also on the, from this earth because he saw affinity with them. Yes. For example, like that. It's not easy. Any beings who are lost into this world become lost soul. Yeah. Even though if they wake up later on, it takes a long, long time. This is a trouble. That's why not many beings like to come here. <laughs> Only person noble, like Buddha, yeah, or the masters, they come. They knew is. It's a very bad time for them. They know they will suffer, but they come. They sacrifice, they come. They sacrifice nirvana to come to hell. This world is almost like hell. You know, for us it's heaven, but for many it's hell. Huh? People suffer war, uh, famine, yeah, thirst, disease, and oppression, imprisonment, uh, Molestation, all kind of suffering, all kind of suffering. and sickness, nah, without medicine, hunger without food, thirsty without clean water to drink. Sometimes just drink any water and then also get more sick, because bad water, for example. This is terrible. Okay, so and the Buddha, an enlightened master, like Buddha or Jesus, they knew all this. Still come down. Understand? Because they love us. Yeah. It's very difficult to love us, but they try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's not the love that you think. No? It's not like, okay, I love Master Wei very much. I want to hug her, I want to kiss her, I want her to touch my head. That's not love, that's demanding. <laughs> you know? It's not love. <laughs> it's not love. Is not that. But 
okay, we can call that love because it's not hate, okay? <laughs> it's not hatred, but it's not really love, is it? Yeah. Huh? Some more what? Huh? That just one thing, so give me, give me, give me, you know? <laughs> because you feel good taking, so you want it, okay? And then you think, I love her. Yeah. No, you love that kind of feeling. <laughs> You love the thing that you get, you know, because it makes you feel good, yeah? Of course you love also because this, that person is good for you. No? It's like that, okay? But the Buddha's love is different. The love is like that. The love is to jump into a burning fire. The love is to cut your own head to make offering. The, the love is to sacrifice your eyesight. To, to offer, to make offering so that you can become Buddha soon, sooner, in the future. The love is, you know, <laughs> give, give all the property to the poor person without knowing that person, just to save him. The love is to kill yourself so that five people can live. That is the love, the true love. Mm? The love of not wanting anything in return, just truly giving. Yes, this is true love, okay? Hmm. The parents are also love the children. It, it looks also unconditional, yes? But it has also a little condition in it, yes? Because they are your children. Yeah, you, you, you bore them and you saw them since they were young, they were beautiful and cute, and then you grow up with them, and then, of course, it's family. You see? But that love of the Buddha is truly, truly one thousand, one million percent unconditional. Yeah? Because the Buddha sacrificed just for anybody just to become a Buddha, to earn the merit, to earn the affinity with that person or with that, this person, or to earn more merit so that he can become Buddha in, in, in this world, so that he can save many in this world. That is truly unconditional. He doesn't do it because that person is his parents or his wife or his beloved children or anything. He does that, just pure love. That is pure love. Mm. That kind of love we feel very comfortable with. That's why people love the Buddha. Yeah, That's why people love uh, Jesus Christ when he was alive, or love the great prophet Mohammed or the great Guru Nanak. That kind of love they feel, yes. So if you love, you say you love back the Buddha, you love the Buddha because you feel that love from the Buddha first. Understand? Yes. Uh, the human in this samsara world it has very little love, almost zero. <laughs> so if they say they love the Buddha, meaning they just reflect a little bit of the Buddha's love, back to the Buddha. Understand? They love the Buddha because they feel the Buddha loves them. Yeah. yeah. They feel that, oh, this is so comfortable, you know? So comfortable. You don't feel like that with anybody else. You feel this love is so free, yeah, so unbinding, so unrestricted, and just give you happiness and freedom, yeah, and elevation, you know? That kind of love touch your heart. And then, of course, you love that kind of love, and so you say you love the Buddha, <laughs> but meaning only that we reflect a little bit, you know? Yes. Just like the mirror reflect the sun, and then we saw the sun in the mirror, okay? And we think that is the sun. <laughs> it's a, just a, a picture of the sun, a reflection of the sun. But nevertheless, it's a real sun. Yeah, the real sun that reflect into the mirror. So even if we say we, the love is is less than the Buddha, but it also came from the real love. Yeah? the Buddha reflected and we reflected back. So it is very difficult to say I love you, I love somebody. It's 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 very little. Hmm? It's mostly all a possessiveness. Yeah, I love my wife. Yeah, oh, she cooks well. She loves me. She offers me pleasure, eh? and she takes care of me. Yeah, she takes care of the house, and she bears the children to continue my name. 
and she says, sweet and honey, I love my wife. Mm -hmm. And the, the wife loves the husband if the husband is good, earn good money, considerate, loving and kind. And we love all this quality, not necessarily the person. You see what I mean? So mostly if, if the husband and wife love each other so much in the beginning, because you imagine the husband has this quality, the wife has that quality, you expect it, you want it, a wife like that, you want a husband like that, you thought, oh, this is the one, because I love him, I'm sure this is the one. And later you find out, no, that's not him, this is not him, he don't have that, he don't have this, he like this, he's missing that, oh, this neither, this uh, either not, neither, oh, nada, zero. <laughs> You love the illusion of the person that you build up in your heart or in your head. Yeah. And when you were young, the hormone tricked you also. Yeah. You see the person, oh, she is so sexy, he is so charming, I want her, I want him. And then you forget everything else. And then later, after the excitement gone down a little bit, you start counting. Uh, he, he has this, no, he don't have that, nothing, nothing. <laughs> and then you begin having less and less affection. Because the person you want to have is not him. You thought he's him, <laughs> but he's not. <laughs> and then you begin to blame him and blame each other, and then when no more affection, then the marriage gone cold. Yeah, because we imagine a lot, you know. When we first fall in love, we think that person is this and that and others. We thought like that. We read a lot of uh, romantic uh, comedy. <laughs> we saw a lot of television, love story. Yeah, they are written it, and, you know, because they are not in love. <laughs> they imagine all this love has to be like this, so they wrote it <laughs> for you to enjoy, but they don't have it either. <laughs> you understand? When you are so much in love like that, you have no time to write anything. <laughs> Yeah, maximum a, a short poem, but not the whole book about your yeah, romance. You see what I mean? Too busy enjoying love. Eh? So this is the problem. That's why in many of the stories that uh, we, I read for you, that we heard, mostly they always emphasize, the one who wanted to become monks or nuns always emphasize to each other or to herself, himself, that the union, you know, of so-called love between man and woman are just temporarily, and sometimes it doesn't bring happiness at all. Not to talk about lasting happiness, it just make more trouble, pain, and suffer. Therefore, they already know that. Everybody can say that, but knowing it is a different thing. Realizing it truly is a different thing. Yeah, just like everybody says, oh, the Buddha say we have to detach, you know, put down, cut off. Uh, everybody know that, but <laughs> knowing and doing and really understand it deeply is different thing. Just like everybody say, "Oh yeah, uh, he's a Buddha, she's a Buddha." Everybody uh, has the Buddha inside, but to realize your Buddhahood inside is another thing. Yeah, this is a problem, huh? Okay. Yeah, uh, just like okay, you see the uh, this person uh, had just gave birth to a baby. Oh, so cute, so cute. Oh, really beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, baby are so cute. You don't know it until you have one. You see, <laughs> yeah. you don't know because it's not yours. You see, look cute, cute, but you don't feel the same like the mother does. Yeah, and you don't have to. Uh, wake up at midnight to feed him, or wake up again in the morning to feed him, and wake up again before morning to feed him, and then go to work, and then, and then tired, you know, and all that. He's cute, okay, but he's a lot of work. Yeah. And until you are the mother, you don't understand that. And then you say, how come this mother, she doesn't seem to love the baby? How come she let him alone there and go and stay on the table and sleep? Yeah. How can? If it's my baby, I keep holding him all the time. I would not, not let him down. You don't know it, yeah? Until you wake up, you know, every night, <laughs> you know, before midnight, 
at midnight and a little after midnight and a little after after midnight and then in the morning and then wait until he has his first tools and then he has fever and and then and then and then understand and then you have no time to even eat no time to even sleep because you worry so much and then you're so tired also understand and then you begin bickering bickering with husband and wife and uh, etc etc yeah so to know something and to have realized there is something else. Everybody knows you are Buddha, right? Everybody heard that. And we believe so. We believe that we are Buddha. We have Buddha inside and we become Buddha someday. But saying that is different hmm? than knowing. Okay? So reciting the Buddha's name also will not make you become a Buddha. It might make you... Uh, wanting to become like that Buddha, yeah, but it can enable you to be born in heaven, yeah, and enjoy many lifetime of richness, comfortable life as a humans or as a heavenly being. But that won't make you become Buddha, huh? Yeah. In all the books, the Buddha never say that. Okay, you recite my name, then you become Buddha. No, <laughs> right? No. Even recite Amitabha Buddha, it says, so that you can be born in that Buddha's land. Yeah? Stop your suffering. Well, you know? But not to become Buddha, not to become Amitabha Buddha. Hmm? In all the story, or uh, and many other story, you know, the Buddha always emphasized you have to help yourself. See? He always said, you have to be di diligent in your practice, study my teaching di diligently. Yeah? And all that, and meditate, yeah. And he never say that. Okay, just recite my name, Namo Sikamoni Buddha, and then you become Buddha just like me. No, <laughs> even his monks, yeah, when they want to become his monks, then afterward they always emphasize in the book, in the story that afterward, after he say welcome, beat you. Then they became very diligent, study his teaching, not just teaching, but meditation and all that. You see what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't emphasize here, but that means the Buddha teaching also included meditation, of course. So therefore, we always heard that the Buddha came out of Samadhi and then begin to preach that, preach this. Not in this story, maybe, but by other, other sutra. Yeah. Meaning the Buddha always meditate. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. And also, other sometimes we heard that this and that monk meditate. You see, yeah, under the tree and all that. Yeah. So now you know, okay? Yeah. So now you know. If you practice the Kuan Yin method, you could become Buddha. I've seen many. Okay, I've seen many in our group. Not as many as I want, <laughs> but some. You know, for such a rare difficult situation in this world that is is it's good already that they have attained fifth level, even low fifth level. Yeah. So this is a different, eh? To want to become the Buddha you have to practice Buddha method. You don't just recite Buddha's name. Yeah? If you cannot and you recite Buddha's name, at least you uh, save yourself from suffering. Yeah? But to become Buddha is another story. Okay, huh? Yeah. Just like if you don't know English, you, whenever you have problem, you call your teacher, you know, and ask him to translate to the person who you want to say. Like you say in Chinese, and your teacher say English in the, like a three-way conference, yeah, and translate for you. But that not make you. Every time you can call your teacher or your friend, who can Eng uh, translate English for you, but that doesn't make you an English professor keep calling his name all the time, or calling his friend all the time, or your friend all the time. You see what I mean? Yes. Yeah, it's like that. It's like that. Of course, your teacher will help you, you know, if he love, like you and you have good relation, he always help you and translate for you through the phone or through writing, fax, or he help you. Or the translator will help you also. But if you keep calling him all the time, he helps you all the time, sure, but that doesn't make you a good translator or a good English-speaking person, huh? Yeah, so it's good. So calling Buddha's name helps, yeah. But because we're going to through five different worlds and we know the secret code already, so that's good enough, yeah? Mm. 
you no need to recite the Buddha's name. The Buddha, Buddha's name only for person who just happen to hear my talk and don't follow my teaching and don't get initiated and don't meditate. Not that much, understand? So save them from hell. If they go into hell and they re- they believe what I said about the Buddha, they remember Buddha's name. Uh, they will stop in front of the hell, and not enter, because sometimes enter and never come out again. You know, for almost like never come out. Some of the hell, you know, you stay long, long time. It depends on the crime. So I do hope that uh, people out there, if they happen somehow to hear my lecture, they should really sincerely believe in what I said about the Buddhas and recite the name, whatever Buddha's name they like to recite, and then save themselves. Mm. Even if they don't believe in me, but because they heard my lecture, I give some of the blessing into that as well, the living blessing. The life energy is not just the Buddha's name only, yeah. So therefore, they will they will they will be helped if they believe in it. Otherwise, I no need <laughs> to recite all this. Not not even for you. You see, this is for more for the larger public to save many souls, to save people who even against me, who even slander me. Yeah, maybe they don't believe me, they believe Buddha, then it's good. Then they will also be saved and helped in the time of need or in the, the time of death, you know, when they are entering some completely, totally different world and where nobody helps them at all. Yeah. And if they believe in this Buddha teaching, you know, the, the names of the Buddha, then I will also be there helping them. Yeah. At that time of death, they will not <laughs> They will not refuse <laughs> the help. <laughs> yeah. Ah, this is good. Mm. <sighs> Even in the Buddha's lifetime, you heard some of the story, and yeah? they slander the Buddha, and even his cousin, you know, always tried to compete with him and harm him and try to dehumiliate him. Uh, he's uh, humiliate him in many ways. And he was a prince even, yeah? Mm. He's a prince and he just left everything to, to, to went out to become just a monk, after enlightenment, before enlightenment and after enlightenment. What can a prince want, you know? He had everything he needs. And even then people still doubt his sincerity. So many people attain enlightenment and so many miraculous things happen. People still doubt. And then human mind is so difficult to tame and to go through. Hmm? Mm. So therefore, of course, somebody would not believe in what I said. Yeah? But maybe they think the Buddha saved them, then they recite the Buddha's name. It's good for them. Okay? I'm not jealous. <laughs> Please recite all the Buddha's name as much as you want. But the five gods' name, it's the five realms, you see? When you recite their names, all of their relatives and the whole of their kingdom help you. Understand? So that's all you need, really. Hmm? Hmm. Hmm. Because that's the way you want to go. Nah? You want to go to the nirvana, <laughs> the fifth level. So if you, you need help from these lords of the different levels, yeah? Without them, you cannot go anywhere. You recite their names, meaning you know them already. You're introduced to their, to their knowledge, and they help you. Just say, remember one of the gods, when the woman was reciting the Buddha Sutra, and he stopped and listened, and he even called her sister, elder sister. Mm. And he told her to recite, to call his name also whenever he make offering to the Buddha, therefore more more merit to her, more strong, more strength. Yeah, it's like that. And he was just a you know not very high level God for you, the best already. Understand? Yeah, even better than that. Yeah. So they will help you to pass through, to go to your goal. Okay. Mm. 
That's the best you can do hmm? in human life. Hmm. There's no need for you to go to the sixth or seventh level. This is a different world. It belongs to them. You belong in the five world. This is good enough. It's good. You just have to go home. Hmm? Your original home where you it's better, safer and happier forever. Forever. This is the thing. Hmm. Now you see me here. Every time you came, visited me, you say, Oh, you are so happy, yeah? You tell me all the time, I'm so happy seeing Master and stay here, it's like heaven. Wait until you go to fifth level. You will not know what to describe that. Understand? Even you go to second level or third level, if you really have enough merit to realize where you are, you feel so happy, happy. You didn't think of anything else. You will not think there's a better world. Or you never want to go anywhere else. So, but so if you go to the fifth level, that's the end. You never want anything anymore in your life or in next life, nothing. You feel, this is it, my home. <laughs> you feel content, you feel happy forever. This is forever. Never suffer again. You see? Mm. Mm. And why do you feel like heaven here? Mm. There's nothing for you here, really. You see, our toilet keep breaking up, <laughs> keep broken. Yeah? Our water motor stop running all the time. <laughs> yeah, keep uh, uh, making pan. Yeah, making s- stop. Now you're still happy. Yeah? You eat only simple food. Yeah? and you sit on the floor. You sleep on a thin mattress with a blanket outside. Huh? Most people would think you're crazy. <laughs> yeah, you have house, you have husband, wife, children, a big house, a car, yeah? and a good mattress on the bed and aircon, and, uh, and you come here and sleep on the floor and you say, it's heaven. <laughs> <laughs> because of the freedom you feel, because of the loving feeling you feel, because of the ah, contentment you feel. It's just the happiness that you feel. You understand? Therefore, if you go to fifth level, it's also like that. But of course, you don't have to sit on the floor like this. (laughs) Whatever you want is whatever you get. Yeah? You will not even want anything, because everything is there for you already. You see what I mean? It's already prepared way for you. Mm. You never want anything up there, yeah? Mm. Just like here, you come here. Mm? You want nothing anymore, right? Except Master touch my head, you know, <laughs> rub, <laughs> massage my wisdom eye. <laughs> yeah, like the wisdom eye need massage. <laughs> Does he tell you he need massage? No, oh. this uh, just like like that. Childish, you know, children wish. Otherwise, okay. But without, you're also happy, you know? But that would make you feel more complete. You come home and both of you, Master, touch me, you know? <laughs> and the dog shake my hand. Oh, very proud. <laughs> Otherwise, you feel like you want nothing, right? Here. Every day you're here, you feel like you, you don't want nothing else. That's why you don't want to go home, but you must. Yeah? <laughs> Because your visa expired, you have to go home. Yeah. Otherwise, you don't want nothing. You see, because of happiness, because of feeling so free, feeling just happy. I don't know why you're happy, but you you told me you're happy. Are you happy? Yes. You look like that. Yeah, you look like that. You don't want to go home. And that's the proof, right? <laughs> because at home, even in your home, sometimes you want to run away from home, no? Often, yeah? Even your children, sometimes you just want to, oh, I wish that I could be away for a while at least. Nah? You love your children, of course, but you don't always want to just stay there, hugging them forever. Sometimes you even want to leave, you know? I mean, just thinking even. Here, you don't want to leave. Nada. That is a problem. You see? <laughs> Too happy. But why? You see why? This is happiness from inside. That is the happiness you will have all your life now and then in heaven. Never, it never go less. It will go more all the time only. 
And once you're in in the fifth level, then you never want anything else. Even here, just seeing me here, hmm? sitting on the floor, eating two two simple meals a day, sleeping outside on thin mattress and sleeping back, and you're so happy you don't want to leave already. Imagine a fifth level where you have everything else, and your master also <laughs> all the time. Understand? Yeah. The master will be everywhere. Hmm? This is physical. On astral level, also master there, second level, third level, always there with you, for you, and for other people as well. Hmm? But more for the disciples, of course, because uh, there's uh, affinity, you know, and once initiate, have to take care all the way. Hmm? Don't have to, but like to. So like you have your children, you like to take care of them huh? until they grow up, no? Yeah. Well, yeah. this is it, you know. The, the true happiness and the true love is different from the mundane love. You never get tired of it. <laughs> you never get tired of it. Yeah? Even, even people look at you, sit on the floor and or sleep outside, they think you're crazy, of course. Because for them, happiness means big house, flashy car, you know, sleep in a big mattress, you know, with aircon and heater. Of course, we have that if we need. Eh? But even then, you know, you're just happy. Yeah, you're just happy. Yeah. This is real happiness. Yeah. Without any extra uh, help from outside, or without any husband, wife hold your hand, nothing. Yeah? <laughs> without children, without servants, without anything. Truly without anything. Yeah, you came here, you don't have anything. I mean, you have it. Whatever you have, you have. Yeah? I don't take anything from you. What I mean is, you come here. You, you just live too simple, you know? Yeah, and you're happy, happy. This is because it's true. It's a real love, real happiness. Huh? Okay? <laughs> All right then. Mm. Okay. Niman shi bu shi yao zhong bei zhou la? Dei. Hmm? <laughs> 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 This is special Chinese, you know. Sabuta don't mean you just have no heart to live, you know. You have you feel reluctant to live. Yeah. Reluctant to live. But reluctant in, in English is so mild. It's not expressive enough like Sabuta. Mm. Mm. But it's reluctant to leave. Mm. Meaning really tear himself away. You know, don't want to leave at all, but have to because of visa. Mm. I understand her feeling. I feel sorry for all of you. Whenever you leave, just like you take a part of me <laughs> away. But, but this world is like that. There's not much I can do at the moment because uh, it's already established, you know, different countries and different language, different law, different uh, trouble, different control, different all kind. Until one day the world become one world, then, then we will have less trouble. Then you can stay as long as your situation allow you. You know, as long as your family allow you. I mean, everything okay at home, you can stay as long as you want. I also wish that kind of day come. Then we will have a bigger space, you know, we maybe have a big, and we go by the whole desert and everybody <laughs> dig a hole. Yeah, we don't need to. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> I'll sit there until we die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, only desert nobody wants. Yeah? 
Oh, Siberia, you know. <laughs> oh, there you can have, oh, <laughs> thousand of hectares, you know, for maybe fifty euros. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And all we do is just bring five sleeping bags. <laughs> And then snuck in. <laughs> oh, five sleeping bags we do, you know. And then we all gather in one big tent, you know. Put a fire in the middle, everybody <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> Sister, are you <laughs> are you all right? <laughs> Brother, are you feeling as I am feeling? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of choice, you know. <laughs> Either go to the desert, big one, Sahara or Gobi, nobody wants them. <laughs> very little, very little inhabitants or zero inhabitants, you know, and they're very friendly. I heard they leave food in their house and their door always open. In case some uh, travelers happen to pass by, then they use their house just like, you know, because in desert it's very difficult to find any shelter. So they always leave their house open and some food always ready, food and drink for the desert travelers. This is, so we can go there, you know, we have food and drink ready all the time. <laughs> At least, you know, they're friendly. They'll be happy to see a lot of this kind of face coming, <laughs> smiling, hungry and thirsty. <laughs> Can you show us your hospitality? <laughs> yeah, we can buy big desert, you know. And then we dig deep in the ground. Everybody dig deep, about ten meters, sit in there, cool. <laughs> Nobody want to check visa, what for? <laughs> if they want to reach us, maybe they die before, you know, in the desert. It's a hostile, you know, desert. And then... <laughs> So we could even stay there illegally. <laughs> Just a bad joke, huh? Mm. Oh, we go to Siberia. Some people already invited. <laughs> Some people already invited me to Siberia. They said, "Oh, big land, master, and we very welcome everybody." <laughs> yeah, I'm still thinking about it. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, maybe good. We just find a corner that nobody ever want to go, yeah? <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, we'll be free forever. Mm. Yeah, there were only two problems, uh, two, two choices. Either we have food and drink and we survive, yeah? In our hole or in our wigwam or in our, you know, what's it, the ice, the ice, uh, in the iglo, yeah? Either we have food, drink, Survive in the igloos, or we have no food, no drink, and we just die happily, you know, <laughs> quick. <laughs> in the cold climate, you die very quick. I mean, in the winter, when it's snowing, when it's too too cold, if you want to die, very simple. Go outside, sit for a while, and you're gone. Nobody bother you. <laughs> Nobody come and stop you. <laughs> Not quick enough. You die before anybody even come. Yeah, in in. Uh, <laughs> why are you laughing? You like to die like that, huh? The Eskimo tradition before, you know, I don't know if they still do it. When you're older, and you cannot do much help for the family, become a burden. You just go out in the in the cold and sit there, and then die. Very simple. Like that. Uh, a long time ago, you know, Eskimo tradition, because they don't have much there. You know, they have to eat raw, raw fish, raw liver, raw flesh to survive. And then um, the woman had to use her teeth. I told you already before, I think, to to chew the leather from the animal that they hunted, chew it soft, 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 so that they can make clothes to wear, because they survive on that. There's no clothes factory over there, nothing. Oh. And then, so therefore their teeth gone bad very quickly. Mm. 
So after they're older and no use, the teeth will fall off, then they go out and die. Don't want burden family. Just normal for them, yeah? Nowadays they have everything already, don't worry, nobody go out and die like that. So if we go there, we don't have to follow the tradition, okay? <laughs> Nowadays we have dental, you know? We can, <laughs> we can chew forever. <laughs> <laughs> Even if we all we can chew forever, so we are always useful. You understand? We will earn our upkeep by chewing <laughs> vegetable. <laughs> so it's uh, very simple to live in some cold country. You know what I mean? Mm. Either we survive, or we die quickly, painless. Mm? Yeah. How come so quiet? Nobody like to die. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I thought you wanted me to take you to heaven quickly. <laughs> All right then. Mm. Then we don't go. Hmm? Then we don't go there. <laughs> yeah. The Buddha sacrificed so much to become Buddha. You just die simple and you don't want. It's very eco friendly. <laughs> yeah. No, and after you die, maybe some animals will come and eat your flesh. Hmm? It's also a kind of sacrifice. Before you die, you say, I, I die and I want to become Buddha <laughs> by this merit. <laughs> okay. I wish all of you a good night, good meditation, and whoever goes, go with love and, and go with peace, okay? This is the one who is going away, okay? <laughs> yeah. Only people who goes away take, okay? You know we don't have enough people here. Mm. Yeah. We don't really have people. Yeah. That's why the house is full because whoever stay here has to work. If they don't work, they don't stay. <laughs> Therefore, the whole house is full of working people. <laughs> They make excuse to stay. I saw that. I saw that. Sometimes I went into the kitchen, and then I saw a man. After he saw me going, he also go there. Can I do something? Momo, tong momo, si momo. Yeah, it's like that, huh? Yeah. The woman also. Make themselves look busy, you know. Say, like, Master, you're coming, look busy. Because <laughs> the house is small, you know. <laughs> the house is small, and the workers are pri has priority. Yeah, but I treated them uh, many days already, right? How many weeks? Two weeks at least, no? Since uh, SMC already. Huh? One week. One week. Only one week? No. When did we come back here? Twenty-six. Huh? Twenty-five. Today is? Today is the third. Huh? Third of September? Mm. Mm. Let me count, huh? <laughs> Oh, only eight days? It seems like forever to me. <laughs> we were also in SMC before, right? I was talking to you one time or how many times? Three times. Sometimes two times, sometimes three times. Because the other time he's sleeping, that's why. He don't count. So then it's about, um, about 11, 12 days, something like that. huh? My, it seems like forever to me. <laughs> seems to you very short, huh? That's why she knows only one week. Yeah, I thought it's many months already. <laughs> okay then, truly, really? Yeah? yeah? Only one week here? Eight days? Eight days. Yeah, <laughs> almost. Okay, huh? You went to the Lusen Fong, okay? Meaning have a safe trip. Yeah, have a safe trip. Okay, and then, huh? What? Where? Wait a minute. Huh? 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 Huh?
。哎呀，不要再找传统了，<笑>什么都要，静静默过，大家拿就行了，别操劳我好吗？<笑>我只有一个人，两只手，什么都要做。你不知道，谢谢。哎呦，哎呦，慢点走。我还没有吃饭呢。哇，慢一点，慢一点，没看到狗呢。谢谢三只狗来照顾。你们太高兴了，不知道师傅苦心了。知道知道知道知道，太高兴快乐了，不知道师傅。恭喜师傅，是的，不容易啊。我已经尽量了，好吗？好，能做多少我都做了。对，是的，谢谢师傅。谢谢。慢点，慢点，慢点，慢点，慢点，慢点，慢点，慢点，慢点，慢点，慢点，慢点，慢点，慢点，慢点，慢点，慢点，慢点，慢点，慢点，慢点，慢点，慢点，慢点，慢点，慢点，慢点，慢点，慢